What's up? My name is Naska, and in this video, we're going to be talking over the parametric EQ to inside of a Visual Studio 12 and how to EQ in general. All right. So EQs in general are one of the most important aspects about music production in any genre, really. EQs are being used because for the listener, a clean and clear mix is the most important part. It's really important that the listener has a very nice listening experience and we've, when you've got many uh, elements playing at the same time, you want to make sure that those have their own space in the frequency spectrum. Um, let's talk about this plugin. So first of all, I'm going to add a serum just for frequency reference. Uh, this is going to be our audio signal. I'm going to assign it to a mixer channel and then I'm going to load up a parametric EQ2. All right, so this is what it looks like. And um, one really cool feature instead of FL Studio 12 is that you can resize this thing. And you also have this plugin in, say, for First Studio 11 or 10 or 9. So if um, you're not using the latest version, you're still going to have this. Anyways, so this is what the EQ looks like. Um, as you can see, the um, visualization is vertical and with colors. So the brighter the color, the higher the amplitude is of that certain frequency. And as we go through, as you can see, it starts shifting, so this can get very complex, uh, which is really nice because um, the color theme is very nice to see where certain frequency peaks are. So basically, if you've, say, got a vocal and it has very harsh highs, so like it's very unpleasant for the ears, you're going to see that inside of this visual visualization, which is really nice. So this part right here is going to be like that, really red. Anyways, so. We've got a total of seven EQ bands um, with each about seven different modes, as you can see right here. Um, we've also got some order customization, so we can make it more accurate, more surgical, as, as uh, some would say. And uh, we're just going to be going over the different types you can have and how you can use them. So the first one would be low pass. Um, a site high pass as well. These are the ones that you're probably going to be using the most. This basically only leaves um, low frequencies through, as you can see right here. So we're cutting off the high frequencies. And we can change this also to a high pass, which is the opposite. So we are removing low frequencies and only leaving the high ones. Then we've got something like band pass, which only leaves um, mid frequencies. I would only recommend using things like band pass and band stop um, for sort of like sound design purposes when you're making really so complex sounds, because otherwise this these acute uh, band types are necessarily great for mixing. Um, then you've got low shelf, which basically just at a certain point starts to boost all the frequencies behind it. So say we go a bit lower, lower. I'm gonna put this one octave down. So we can go right here. So all the frequencies around here till the end are gonna get boosted. Same goes for the high shelf, which is just the opposite. So you can tell. And then we've got the peaking, which is my favorite um, out of all of them because it is, I feel like the most, uh, the most clean way to sort of add or remove frequencies from the uh, whole spectrum. Unless obviously you want to completely remove low frequencies, then I would recommend you using a high pass. Anyways, so that's what you can do. Um, you've also got bandwidths right here. You can use the uh, mouse wheel to set these as well. So for example, this is the peak band type right now. So if I play something, you can tell um, this is very smooth, but if I crank the bandwidth down, right, it gets very um, sort of sharp and centered and focused. But yeah, so you've got seven of these. Um, you can set them up however you, way you want. You can use all kinds of modes for these. You can have some very complex, uh, weird sort of EQ um, things going on. But there's another few things we have to go over. So, for example, if we want to remove the lows, we would be using a low pass, I mean a high pass. And um, here's one of the things that is really cool, is that you can 
Now go over to order and put this, for example, to steep 8, which makes it much sharper. So if we cut out those frequencies right here, this is going to be, be much more efficient than just the normal one, which basically just leaves more and cuts up more of the um, base region instead of the sub region. So I always use these if you want a low cut. It's a very clean um, low cut. And same goes for the high pass. If um, you want to be very surgical, always use high steep modes. And um, yeah, so we're just going to go over one example. The cues are usually very um, efficient when you have elements that overlap. So for example, if we want this serum patch right here to be a base, and this serum patch to be a lead, uh, we're going to run into a problem if we don't EQ, because what's going to happen is that if we just go to the master, um, and I play these at the same time, you can see they overlap quite a lot. So what we can do um, is we can load up an EQ and just cut out the lower frequencies. Now you've got to be careful because sometimes you really have to um, think about which frequencies you want to cut out because this has more of a deeper feeling and once I cut this out it sounds a bit empty so be sure to not just cut out frequencies completely make sure that it still sounds good and then for the low bass uh, we can definitely cut out those high frequencies so we can change this to a low pass just cut those out and now it's a lot cleaner. Now the thing is, these are perfectly clean saw waves, which means that you're not gonna really have low frequencies, but as soon as we go into more complex things, let me just load up something that is very complex. That one is still clean, or let's just go very, very low with this bass. So if it's solo this, you can see this has a lot more different frequencies so this whole spectrum is really different as you can see there's like a huge part right here that's being boosted and then we've got some rambling in the in the bottom and this is where you could use be using this for example if you make genres like dubstep or our drum and bass um where you're where you're going to be using separate subs a separate sub you can use this so you could change this to a high pass and change the order and just cut out those low frequencies. And you can even EQ, I mean automate these. So if you go into the playlist, you can go in here, you can put this down. You can use this as a filter as well. So you can use, for example, um, band four and you can automate the frequency down here. So just right click this uh, little knob right here and go to create automation clip and then you can just sort of go and scan through the whole frequency spectrum. Maybe for example change this to a different automation mode. Wave for example. So there's really a lot of possibilities with this. Um, I would still recommend using this rather just for mixing purposes. So remove frequencies, add frequencies, make sure it sounds nice. But yeah. That's how you use the parametric EQ2 inside of a Fire Studio 12.